Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for the Tradex Foods 3-Minute Market Insight, the Monday Morning Pulse Report for seafood purchasers. Some fast facts to start this week's insight. A major Japanese producer has cancelled a 1,500 metric ton shipment of chum salmon to the North American market due to consumer price resistance. The impact? Prices may fall, but this will not likely happen until May or June of next year. The sockeye salmon market has appeared to hit, have hit its peak. High prices are slowing down sales as there is a risk of end consumers switching to alternate proteins. The halibut fishery closed on November 15th. Despite low inventories, high prices have wavered and restaurants are pulling halibut off menus in favor of sole and other white fish. In the news this week, Pollock. The National Marine Fisheries Service has released its assessment on Eastern Bering Sea Pollock. The agency recommends that the 2011 total allowable catch be 1.267 million metric tons, an increase of 15% over last year's forecast. Annual Alaska pollock quotas fluctuate considerably due to the natural cycle trend of the biomass. However, in recent years, fluctuations have been more extreme. Quotas reached an all-time high in 2006, that is 1.6 million metric tons, and in 2010, just four years later, quotas dropped 49 percent, an all-time low of 813,000 metric tons. The North Pacific Fishery Management Council won't set harvest guidelines for, out, for Alaskan pollock until December, but the council has typically followed the agency's recommendations and next year's quota is expected to be about 56 percent greater than in 2010. Quotas are expected to rise even more in 2012, reaching 1.6 million metric tons. Alaskan pollock represents 40% of global whitefish. However, however, surging supply may not influence prices as one would think. The increased quotas are coming at a time when supply of farm products, including tilapia and pangaceous, is leveling off after years of considerable growth. Reduced Asian production can be attributed to labor shortages, while tilapia production in China is further hindered due to the flooding in the Hainan province. Increased Alaskan pollock quotas will make up for the reduced farmed whitefish supply and will also help to meet increased demand that is surfacing in emerging, emerging markets, most notably China as well as Russia and Brazil. In other news, the cold water shrimp market appears to be picking up. In 2009, Oregon produced about 22 million pounds of shrimp, down from over 25 million pounds in 2008. The primary cause for reduced production last year? Poor market demand. But this year, two underlying factors are contributing to the flourishing demand overseas. First, Atlantic fisheries in both Canada and New England are cutting quotas. Consequently, European customers who tr traditionally purchase the Atlantic species are switching to the Pacific variety. Second, a softening dollar against currencies in, in key markets, notably the Euro and British Pound, is creating increased demand. Oregon's 2010 pink shrimp fishery closed on October 31st. No figures are yet in, but word on the street is that the production levels have boosted in an effort to meet the rising global demand. So, what does this mean for purchasers? Prices are definitely trending upwards for both Atlantic and Pacific cold water shrimp. Early November, frozen Pandalus borealis from Atlantic Canada was being sold for up to $4 per pound for $175 to $250 count. Prices for the Pacific Northwest variety Pandalus jordani at a $250, $350 count are about 10 to 15% lower than their Atlantic counterparts due to their smaller size, but are still higher than recent averages. Thank you for joining me for the Tradex Foods 3-Minute Market Insight. This is Robert Ryerson. Buy smart and eat more seafood.